the 50mm 1.2 from Voidlander. This is the VM mount, which means it's for Leica M mount. Now, I've done an unboxing and first impressions on this. Um, the video link will pop up somewhere. And this is my conclusion on the lens. I've been using it for a few weeks and I got to use it in Taiwan quite a lot on my Leica MP, M10P, sorry, and on my M6 TTL 0.58 magnification on the viewfinder. So I've shot this with film and digital. So I'm gonna give you my conclusion on the lens and what I think about it. But before I do, what I'm gonna tell you guys is to remember to subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell down there because I'll be doing an updated video on this, which is my new 28mm 5.6 Sumeron, which everybody seems to think I'm crazy buying this lens because it is a 5.6 and up. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's not for low light, this lens. So I'll be doing my conclusion video on that lens. And I'll also be doing an unboxing, first impressions, and a review video on this, which is the 35mm 1.7 Ultron from Voidlander, VM mount again. So I'll be doing a, two videos on this lens as well. So remember to subscribe and you'll get notifications if you click that bell. So what do I think about the lens? Um, okay, let's talk about the build quality. This lens is really, really well made. It's made by Castina, which also makes Zeiss lenses, and you can tell. It's beautifully smooth. Um, even after a couple of weeks of using it quite a lot, it's still really, really smooth. The aperture ring has some really nice tight clicks to it, um, so you're not gonna easily knock it or anything. And the sharpness at 1.2, um, yeah, it's good. On the M10P, on this camera. On the M6, I was having trouble hitting it at 1.2. To be truthful, I was really having trouble getting that shot at 1.2. Every time I tried, it was a little bit out. It's very, very narrow depth of field, and this is an old rangefinder, so it's not the brightest and it's not the easiest to see. Plus, most of the time I was shooting in the rain or really cloudy days, so it wasn't very bright neither, so that didn't help. But I'm still impressed with the lens. Um, I don't think you're gonna get a sharper 50 mil. It is really, really sharp. It's not like the 35mm 1.2 that Voidlander made. Now that was a pretty bad lens at 1.2. It was very soft and there was a lot of flaring and there's a lot of issues with that lens. This is completely different. Voidlander have upped their game and they are very, very close to Leica. Now, this is probably about a fifth of the price of a Sumalux, a quarter or a fifth of the price of a Sumalux 50mm. Buy this, don't buy the Sumalux. If you want the Leica name and the Leica brand, buy the Leica. But if you're not worried about that and you want a lens that is incredibly sharp, really smooth, very easy to focus, go for this, the Voidlander 50mm 1.2. It's that good. I was so impressed with it. Sadly though, I'm not gonna keep it. Now it's nothing to do with the lens, okay? The thing is, for me, I shoot 28mm. And because I shoot 28mm, this is a big jump away from 28mm and I wasn't comfortable with it. Um, I kind of found I was too far away from my subject and I wasn't connecting with the photo, if that makes sense. I like to engage in my photo, I like to be close up and I like to see what's going on in my photo. That's why I shoot with 28mm um, Sumeron and I also shoot with a 28mm Sumicron. Now this is the new Sumicron and it's an incredibly good lens. Obviously Sumicron means f2, Sumilux means 1.4. This is my favourite lens, um, I have that on my cameras all the time. This is a really good lens. This is nothing to do with the lens, the build, the quality or anything. If I was a 50 mil shooter, I'd go for this. If they made a 28 mil 1.2, hey Voidlander, if you're listening, make a 28 mil 1.2 and I'm there. You can have my money now. I'll be straight there. But I don't shoot 50 mil. It's just not for me, especially on a rangefinder. On my work cameras, my S1, S1R, the 50 mil I use all the time. My film cameras, like my FE2, um, a Pentax that I've got, which I will get to that in another video. I have a Pentax, never shot a Pentax, and a Pentax arrived here in the post. So thank you, Scott. But we'll get to that in another video. It's a really good lens, but it's not for me. So what we're gonna see now, we're gonna see a slideshow um, of the photos taken with this lens on the M10P and on the M6 TTL 0.58 magnification. Um, I will put at the bottom of each photo whether it was shot on the M10 or the M6 so you guys know if it's film or digital, but I think you can tell because the film's quite noisy.
So as you can see from the photos, I didn't have the best weather out there. It was either raining or really cloudy. But this is a cracking lens. This is a really, really good lens. I'm just a little bit upset I don't shoot 50 mil. I'm not a 50 mil person. I wish I was um, because it is a really, really good lens. But it was worth trying it. And my honest opinion, if you are a 50 mil shooter, go for this lens. This is an outstanding lens. It's beautifully made. Now, before I finish this video, there is one problem with this lens, okay? Nothing major, but it is something you need to be aware of. Now, on my M10, okay, so I'm, gonna sh I'm looking at a camera over there because I'm gonna show you. On my M10, this fits perfect, okay? Beautiful looking lens, looks really good on there. So my finger goes underneath the lens, pushes the release button, and I can release the lens, which is easy. Now, on an older camera, like an M6. So I'm gonna swap around here. What too many cameras going on? Hang on. There's a little bit of an issue. Nothing major, but you have to be aware of this, especially if you've got chunky fingers. If you've got chipolata fingers, you're gonna have a problem with this because as you can see, my finger won't go underneath. <laughs> I can't get in there to push the release button because this bit here sticks out too far and the button's too far in. The good part though, is this has like um, a finish to it for grip, which is kind of rough. So it actually files your nails down, which is quite nice. You can get your nails filed on there. But seriously though, I can just release it. And like I said, I have average size hands. I don't have big chunky fingers or anything. If you've got big man hands or shovels, basically, you're not gonna get your fingers in there. Yeah, and a couple of times I've actually had to really dig in to get it. That is the only downside if you're shooting it on an old film end. I'm actually getting a little choked up now because I don't want to get rid of it because it's that good a lens, but I just won't shoot a 50 mil. I'm not a 50 mil person. This is what I'm going to try. To try and get myself away from 28 mil, I'm going to try a 35 mil 1.7 lens. Now this lens, I will be doing a video on this. And then I will be doing a review video after using it for a few weeks on the M10P and also on my M6 as well. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon big difference in size between these two. This is nice. So if you look at that,